Hey folks, David Stewart here. It's time for another little logic video, and today I'd like to talk about convexity. I talked about this on a live stream, but I thought it'd be good to make it its own video so I could get more direct feedback to this idea. But convexity as it relates to data and decisions is the relevance or the impact or the importance of an event or a decision or a piece of data rather than the data in total. I'll give you an example. Let's say we looked at the, the economic qualities of George W. Bush's presidency. Now, following 9-11, which had a negative economic impact initially, you had six years of economic growth and then a year of economic decline. So you might be inclined to think that George W. Bush was a good economic president because you had six years of growth and only one year of decline. But what's missing is the convexity of that decline, the impact of that decline and how severe it was, because that was the housing bust. That was where the regular people, the little guy, the people who had put all of their extra wealth into paying down a large mortgage lost essentially everything they had put into their houses and ended up owing more on their houses than what the house was actually worth to the market. Um, so the economic, the economic decline of that year was so great it wiped out all of the potential gains from the previous six years and then some if you are looking at the average person rather than somebody who's just owning equities and stocks. So the convexity of that negative ac economic growth was really, really tremendous. It was extremely important. But if you just look at the data in general, you're going to be missing some of those. And of course, the decisions which created that were highly convex. They had a very big impact. Whereas other decisions with the economy like, you know, are we going to raise the interest rate by a quarter percent? Had a much smaller impact than just making the decisions for how mortgages were going to be administered by the government, um, which caused massive inflation of the, of the housing markets and then, of course, a big bust. So the convexity of the decisions was not equal. Um, likewise, you could think of traders. You know, you have some traders that they lose money all year long and then they make a ton of money on a few trades. The importance of uh, the money, uh, the importance of the trades where they made money is greater than the importance of the ones where they didn't. They make maybe lots of small little risks and then they may have a few uh, big trades and they end up making money versus you may have a, a trader who makes money almost all year long but loses it all in a stock market collapse and so has actually lost money even though you look at paper and you're like, oh, he he averages some, some amount of gain even though he may have lost money uh, pretty significantly or lost perhaps all of the value of his portfolio uh, within a couple of trades. What's missing is the convexity. That's why averages can be so deceptive without distribution data is that they don't contain convexity. Another example, and I put this out on Twitter, I said, let's say you're going to hire an employee and you're going to give him a 100 problem math test because arithmetic is, is part of doing the job. Let's say he's a parts delivery person. He's got to, he's got to add up uh, and multiply and do a lot of calculations for your customers. So you give, a, give him a 100 problem math test. You have two candidates. One answers all 100 questions in the time that you give him and he gets an 85%. The other person answers only 50 questions. They only get 350 questions of the of the test, uh, but they get all 50 questions right. Which one is a better fit? Now, a lot of people got this kind of intuitively. They're like, well, the, the person who answered 50 of the questions right, if we give him the other 50, would he answer those 50 right as well if we doubled the amount of time? That would be a better choice because having um, having an arithmetic mistake can cost you huge amounts of money depending on how much money it is. The convexity is missing. So if you make one math mistake and it costs your company a lot of money, it may be more than the total value of the employee uh, can be lost there. Or if you're an engineer and you make one single math mistake, you know, if you're a civic engineer and you make a math mistake and the ramp is too steep and the ramp collapses and it kills somebody, wow, you made a, a very important math mistake, even though that's not the way that we tend to grade math students. We don't grade math according to convexity. You have 100 problems and you get 85% of them right, boom, you got an 85%. And in fact, this is the case with most standardized tests. They're completely missing convexity on any of the questions. They tend to all be weighted the same or within, um, within the same range. Oh, well, this problem's four points and this problem's two points. Well, in real life, it'd be like, well, this problem's uh, 50,000 points and this one is 10 points, you know, because the relevant uh, convexity of the decisions can be an extreme difference uh, to one another. So if you look at, you know, something like the SATs, 
um, someone may score very highly on the SATs, make a few mistakes, and what's missing is the importance of those mistakes. As somebody who thinks slower or um, is unable to maybe complete an IQ test as quickly as somebody else may actually be a better employee because they're more accurate with what they're able to complete. Uh, what's missing is the convexity. Likewise, um, somebody who makes lots of good business decisions and makes one bad one can actually lose all of their money, depending on how important that one bad decision is. So that's a it's a thing that's missing from most data. And in a lot of cases, um, data is constructed in a way to minimize convexity because convexity kind of throws a monkey wrench into the way that you want people to think about uh, particular issues, right? Um, so you know you could even use something like uh, I don't know, like a surgery, right? You know, there's a ninety five percent chance that nothing's going to happen. But if there's a 5% chance you die, well, that 5% chance is highly impactful. Uh, you don't maybe want to take that chance unless the chance of you dying from the surgery is some extremely low number. So even a 1% chance of dying from surgery uh, may be extremely important because you want to have 0% chance of dying. It depends on what the what the upside is. So what's missing from that data set when we say a 99% chance of survival is um, what's the survival if you don't have the surgery? And uh, how, how important is the bad outcome from the surgery? Will it kill you? Uh, so anyway, thanks for thanks for watching. Don't forget to give me some comments down below, and you can check out my books there at dvspress.com. I have uh, new stuff coming out soon, uh, which is going to be Lovecraftian horror. I know that doesn't have anything to do with logic, but you know, that's how it is. So have a good one, and I'll see you guys next time.